Good morning. good morning. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Will you stand with me as we sing our call to worship, Spirit of the Living God? Good to have each one of you with us this morning. We are thankful and blessed to be here today. It's always a blessing to be able to come out to the, the house of the Lord and 
celebrate and worship together. It's uh, good to be here, and we're glad that you're here this morning as well. By way of announcing, let me say that tonight we're going to have a, uh, a men's meal tonight, men's supper. It'll be at 6 o'clock at the Family Life Center. Uh, we we'll invite each and every one of you, all the guys out for that. It's, uh, we're going to have a spaghetti supper. It's about, I think we're asking like $3 a plate just to kind of cover the expenses, but that'll be tonight at 6 o'clock, and encourage each one of you to come out for that. Uh, the youth are have, is having a Valentine's banquet. It's uh, February the 8th. If uh, you want tickets for that, if you'll see Kimberly or Eric, they'll get you uh, situated for that. If you've not come to it, you'll have a good time. We always have a good time at it. It's a lot of fun. They do a great job with it. So if you've been to it before, then you know you'll, you'll have a good time. If you've not, I encourage you to come out. You'll, uh, you'll have a great time. And it, it's for everybody. So anybody who wants to come to it, you're more than welcome to come out and participate in it. Uh, are there any other announcements before we take prayer requests? All right. What about prayer requests this morning? Harold and Margaret. Harold and Margaret. Yeah, Judge Duncan had surgery this morning at 10 o'clock. Some of you may or may not know that he fell uh, this past uh, Saturday or Friday. Friday night, I believe it was, and, uh, and has a, a, a small break. And so I believe they were doing a procedure this morning at 10 o'clock. So keep him in your prayers when you pray. Any other prayer request of any kind? Right. Right. Isn't that something? That's great. Absolutely. I tell you, you know, God's still, still very much uh, in the healing business. You know, He's as much God today as He's ever been. So uh, we're thankful for that. Anybody else have a prayer request this morning? Okay. Who was he again? I'm sorry. Lynn Michaels. Okay. Lynn Michaels. This Betty Goins. Okay. Betty Goins. Let's give praise for now. Of course, we got the fellowship, but let's also thank the ladies that fix it for us. Right, yeah, the, uh, Jenny Sunday School class, Soul Sister Sunday School class is going to be preparing our, our food tonight. So uh, we're very thankful for their help and participation. Janie's been sick. Right, Janie's been sick. We have a lot of a lot of flu and different stuff, all sorts of stuff going around right now. Francis and Carl. Okay. Howard Rhodes. Howard Rhodes. Madeline Lovelace. Madeline Lovelace. All right. All right, what about unspoken with a show of hands? God knows our hearts. He knows what's going on in our lives, things that only He knows about. So, uh, so this morning, let me invite you. I know everybody's got stuff going on. We've all, uh, from big stuff to maybe small stuff, but things that occupy our mind and often serve as a distraction sometimes. This is the time we step away from those things. We lay that stuff down with an intentional step. We leave that stuff behind for a minute. And uh, I am convinced that uh, the more we keep our eyes on Christ, as the song talks about, the smaller the things of this world tends to get. So if you'll spend time this morning in His presence, giving Him thanks and lifting up His name, uh, you will be transformed, you'll be encouraged, you'll be strengthened in a big way. So if you'll stand to your feet and bow your head, let us go to the Lord with a word of prayer this morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, we thank you, Lord, for this time together. We thank you for the opportunity that we have today to gather together with friends and family and uh, in your presence and lift up your name. And Father, I know right now that in uh, each and every individual's lives, there's stuff that's going on. There's things that we wrestle with. There's things that only you know about. And Father, as we lay those things down at your feet this morning, we just want to spend this time in your presence this morning. We just want to spend this time lifting up your name, giving you praise, glory, and honor for who you are. Lord, we know that as long as we're in this world, we're going to deal with broken things. We're going to have broken lives. And this flesh is going to give us problems. And, and, and things from relationships to finances are going to be things that we're constantly dealing with. And God, I pray that today that, that we put our eyes on your wholeness and we put our eyes on who you are and we find, we find, uh, we find healing there this morning. Lord, we lift up those that are sick, those that are dealing with loss, and we ask that you would encourage them, that you'd strengthen them, and that you'd continue to bring about a healing in their life. And we ask once again that your spirit would rest upon this service in a wonderful way. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'll remain standing, we'll let the choir lead us in worship this morning. <clears throat>
standing let us read our affirmation of faith together if you'll direct your attention to the screen let us read I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified dead and buried the third day he rose from the dead he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
this time we'll ask our ushers to come around as we we'll take up our tithes and offering this morning. Bow your heads, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Fathers, we come to you this morning. We pray, Lord, for your blessing upon this offering. Father, we ask, Lord, that uh, you bless every gift that's given this morning, every offering that's offered up to you. We ask that you take it, multiply it, and use it for the building up of your kingdom. We ask that your Holy Spirit guide the church in the proper use of it. And we thank you, Father, for all the many blessings you've poured out upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Stand for the doxology, please.
Once again, let me say it's good to have each one of you with us this morning. We are thankful and glad to be here today, and we're glad to have you here with us. So uh, uh, it is a, it's always a blessing to be able to gather together and lift up the name of Christ. The title of the sermon this morning is Faith for Today. And uh, we got two or three passages here that we're going to read in just a few minutes. And uh, so, uh, But before we get into the passages, we're going to talk about today, uh, you know, in a sermon, you want to do a number, a couple of different things when you're... Uh, Delivering a sermon or a lesson or whatever it might be, even in songs, they, they try to adhere to the same thing. It's the you, not only do you want to talk about whatever truth it is you're going to share, but you always want to answer the question, "So what?" As well, you know, you always want to answer the question. Uh, you know, now that we've, if we're talking about God loves us, what does that mean for us? You know, what? How do we apply that? How do we engage that in our life? And how is it supposed to make a difference and change us? And uh, uh, and so for today, that question is a little harder to answer. Uh, it's a little harder to answer for each one of us about what this looks like and how to apply that. But, but we're going to talk about it today and, and we're going to let the Spirit do uh, what it does and, and help you make this application for your own life because it probably will look different for everybody and how you live it out. And, and, and what we're talking about more than anything else, we're talking about how we handle our days, our, 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 our today, in a matter of speaking, because it seems like today is often used as a, just a transition period for a lot of people. It's, it's getting from where we used to be to where we want to be, and it seems like a lot of our days, if not all of our days, end up being like that. It's, it's as if almost none of us were ever created for this day, but we're always created for a, a day in the future. You know, we spend today oftentimes looking back at what once was or planning for what might be tomorrow. And in the process of that, the, 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 our day becomes nothing more than a time of transition to get from point A to point B. And we don't embrace the day that God's blessed us with. We don't make the most of it. And we, don't, we fail to understand the possibilities and the miracles that could unfold in our life today. Because like I said... It's either a place of where we stand and we look back or we stand and we plan to go forward. The question is, what would it look like if today was embraced as a day that God created us for? This is the day. You know, I, I've, I've many, you know us, we have our, our kids and, 
And many people tell me, my sister's got four kids as well, but her kids are older than ours. Her youngest boys are 16. She's got twin boys are 16. Uh, she's got a girl who is, I want to say she's, she's 18, and then her oldest one is around. She'll turn 21 this year. So uh, I met them this past week at a restaurant there in Gadsden, and we sat down for a few minutes, and she and I talked. And, you know, they just kind of talked about the things that are going on in their kids' life and the things that are going on in my kids' lives and so forth and so on. And, uh, and you know, and her kids are at a different place than, than my kids are, and so she deals with different problems than, than the type of problems that I deal with. And so she tells me, like many people tell me, that, you know, you're going to look back at this time and you're going to realize what a special time this is. You know what I mean? With all the little kids. And she's going to say, this, she tells me now, this time passes fast. You need to embrace it. And I tell her, when you're caught in the middle of it, it's not passing fast. You know what I mean? It, 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 it drags on. I feel like we've had, you know, little kids for 20 years in our house is what it feels like at times. And so when you're caught up in it, but I know she's right. I know she's right. Because, I mean, I can learn from my own life that we look back at times that we thought were very stressful, very hard times while we were in it, but when we get past it and we look back, we see them as great times. Caught up in the midst of high school and you're ready to get out and you're ready to move on with your life and you're ready for things to, you know, great things to happen and good things to happen. And when you're caught up in the middle of it, me, you just wanted it done, you wanted it over with so you could get on with life in general. But when you get out of it and you look back, you don't realize how much of a carefree time you're living at that moment. And the same way I was in college. You know, when I was at Alabama and we were going through this and going through that, and I'd accepted the, the, you know, the call to preach and was thinking about entering into the ministry, and I was trying to get my studies done at school, and I, I was all of this. And during that time, I'd met Amy, and we were dating. And, and while you're in it, it feels like you're just in the middle of a whirlwind that, that you can't seem to get a hold of and, you, and it won't settle down and it's just chaos is constantly raging. But when you get out of it and you look back on it, you see it as a great time in your life. You see it as a great time. So just life in general has taught me that, that she's right and, and many people are right who have told me this, that one day... You're going to look back on this time when, you know, you're sitting at the, at the supper table and all the kids are there and, and, and this one's fighting over this and this one don't like what we eat over here and he's poking stuff in his nose and, you know, I mean, and you're picking up stuff out of the, uh, <laughs> or pulling stuff out of his nose. You know, you're picking stuff off the floor and you're washing this and you're doing, and you're, you know, and you're, it's like you're putting out a fire at the supper table, but there's a day coming when Amy and I are going to sit down together and the kids aren't going to be gathered around the table and we're going to think back to what a great time that was. It's just hard when you're caught up in it to see the greatness of that moment. It's difficult. And so my question is, is at a lot of times we stand here in today on the day that we've been blessed with and we look back at those great times and we look back at those great moments or we stand here today anticipating the great times and the great moments that are ahead. The question that I have is, how can we today embrace these, the greatness of the moments and experience them instead of just having to look back and remember them? You know, I, I don't want to miss all of them. I, I don't want it to just be something that I look back on and think of it as a great time in my life or a great experience or, or something that was, you know, I didn't realize how well we had it. I want to understand how well we have it today. You know, I don't want to get to a spot and get to a place and, and look back throughout life and, and just be able to pinpoint all those great moments or stand here today and anticipate them. I want to be present in those moments. You know, I, I want to be able to, to embrace the, you know, the, with the little kids at home and I want to be able to embrace sitting around the supper table and I want to be able to embrace all of that for the great moment that it is. Now, I don't... I think you have to intentionally decide to see that. The same is true with our faith. The same is true with about how we experience faith. Because a lot of us talk about faith and we speak about faith as something that was great yesterday. Or we think of it as something that's going to be great tomorrow. We can talk about faith moments in our life that got us through some hard times. I can remember when our house burnt to the ground and uh, everything, we lost practically everything in it and and how God, through our faith, 
established us and took care of us and provided for us. I can look back at when Mama was sick and, and the way that faith was a very much a part of helping us get through that from you know, the day that hospice come in to the day that we did her funeral. You know, I, I can look back and I can see those faith moments and they're very powerful and they're very real and they're full of miracles standing here looking back. I can even talk about my faith in the sense of going forward. I can talk about the day of where our faith is going to end in sight. You know, I can talk about the day of where we're going to have that, that glad reunion day or, or the way that our faith is going to bridge the gap from this world to the next world and, and where eternity really embraces us and we, and it, we begin to live with the Lord forever. And we can talk about the greatness of faith for tomorrow. But the question is, much like to experience in the, the greatness of these experiences that we go through, how do, we, how do we experience our faith today? What does the fullness of your faith look like if you apply it today? Let's forget about the things that it done for us in the past. Let's forget about the things that it might do for us in the future. When does today become a day when you fully experience your faith and the power of your faith is displayed? Everybody is often waiting for another day. Right? People have problems of where they're convinced one day they're going to have enough faith to maybe overcome these problems. Let's say it's a grudge that we hold against somebody. We know it's not right. We know we shouldn't have it. We know it's something that we're going to let go of. And we're planning one day to turn loose of that. One day our faith is going to be manifested in the form of strength and power and we're, going to, we're just going to be able to turn that loose. Or if it's habits that we've got to get rid of, or if it's spiritual disciplines that we want to adopt, one day I'm going to have a powerful prayer life. One day I'm going to sit down and I'm going to get committed to reading my Bible. Or one day I'm going to get committed to church and I'm going to find a place to serve and, and I'm going to be a, a fruitful member of God's kingdom and God's body. One day my faith is going to be manifested in the, in the form of bringing all of this stuff to pass. We, we, we talk about our faith as great things coming in the future. My, my question I guess is, when is it that that day becomes today? What does it look like? when we are very present in the moments that we're experiencing with our faith. I want to read you a passage here. Hebrews 13 and 8 says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm fully convinced that we've got two of these down pat. We can talk about the Jesus Christ of yesterday because all of us can tell you about the great things He's done for us in the past. Everybody can. Even when we didn't fully know Him, we can still talk about the hand that God had upon us. And we've gotten pretty good at talking about Jesus Christ in the sense of forever, in the tomorrow, in the, in the whatever it might be that's coming. We've wrote songs about uh, you know, that, that great reunion day and, and we've, we've got many lessons that have been taught and sermons preached about how our faith is going to bridge that gap one day when we leave this walks of life and we enter into the next and we step into that eternity. And, and we, we've gotten very good at at looking back about our faith from yesterday and understanding how powerful God was yesterday. And we've gotten pretty good at looking forward and seeing how powerful God is in the forever. But where we miss a lot of times is we, we miss the today part. We miss how powerful He is today. How is it that we can stand today and I can talk about great experiences in my life in the past, just life in general, and anticipate great things to come in the future but never experience greatness today. How is that possible? How is it that I can stand here today and tell you how powerful God was yesterday and how powerful God's going to be tomorrow and not believe in His power today? Not believe in His power today. And unfortunately, we often use our days along this line of where we're leaving a time behind us or we're trying to get to another place in life and in the process of that, we kind of close our eyes to the power that lies in God's hand today. Another passage uh, that I want to read, uh, go on to the John passage, if you will. Let's skip Psalm. We're going to the John. I want you to listen to this. This is Mary and Martha. This is the story of where Jesus raises Lazarus up from the dead. We know that Lazarus is sick, and we know that Jesus has not come to him to perform a healing. He stayed where he was at. Lazarus finally dies, and he takes his disciples, and he comes back where Lazarus is at. And here's a story we're going to pick up, and I want you to pay attention. Because they're dealing with the God, they're dealing with Jesus' power of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, much like we're talking about. Listen to this. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, 
My brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. And when she had said these things, uh, when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not say that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you uh, that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said, those, said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth, and Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Uh, Jamie, if you'll go back to the first part of this, please, to the verse 20 and so. In this particular slide, in this passage, Martha and Mary are dealing with some of the same things that I'm talking about today. Jesus comes to Mary and Martha and, and with Lazarus having died. All through this reading, you could hear them say, Lord, if you had been here, he'd still be alive. He'd still be alive if you had been here. Even some of the people who don't necessarily believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Messiah, even they say, you know, this man who healed the blind and made the lame walk, if he'd been here... Lazarus wouldn't be dead today. Why didn't he come on and heal him? It's almost pointing a finger and saying, it's, it's your fault that he's dead. If you'd been here, he'd still be alive. Now, what's interesting is, how is it that they can believe that he is all powerful yesterday and powerless today? Right? They believe he could have done it yesterday if he'd been here. They're fully convinced that he had all power and all authority, and made the lame uh, walk, and made the blind see, and would have healed Lazarus yesterday if he had been here. They had great faith in the Christ of yesterday. And he even goes a step further, where he asks, says, Do you not believe, did I not tell you that your brother will rise again? In verse 24, she says, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Even that she has great faith, not in Jesus of yesterday, but she's got great faith in Jesus of tomorrow as well, in the eternal, in the forever, and whatever, that might, whatever that looks like. So she's got great faith in yesterday, and she's got great faith in Christ of tomorrow, but the problem is, she's not living in yesterday, and she's not living in tomorrow. She is in today. And let me ask you, how is it that we can have so much faith in Jesus, who has done great things for us of yesterday, and anticipating that he's going to do the impossible for us when he bridged that gap from death to eternity and, and tomorrow, but be absolutely faithless today. And we, we, we live like that a lot of times. Many of us experience our faith like that. It, it, it's confusing because the problem with that is you're never going to live in yesterday of where you believe he could do anything and you're never going to live in tomorrow of where you think that he's going to be able to take care of all these problems. Your problem is is that you're always in today. You're always in today. So we've got to figure out what it looks to like, what it looks like to fully live our life in faith today. What would it look like 
If this day was a day that you lived out for the glory of God, there's not a better day coming. Do you know there will never be another day of where God is as powerful as He is today? Do you know that? Never. If you're waiting for Him to get more powerful somewhere down the line to help you out, that day is not coming. It's not coming. There's never going to be a day of where He has more authority than He has today. There will never be a day of where He is more God than He is today. But it seems like our faith declares that He was a great God in the past, and He's going to be a great God in the future, but He can't handle what we're dealing with today. So we live our lives, our days, day in and day out, day in and day out, as a day of transition. Moving from great faith, trying to get great faith, or moving from great experiences in life, trying to get to great experiences in life. Like I said, I know the day's coming of when I'm going to look back at my family and think about these days when maybe we were in Skirm or Pleasant Hill or whatever it might be, and we're going to think those were some great times. You know, the, the, the house was loud at times and chaotic at times and breaking up fights, but there was also a lot of laughter and things along that line. And, and I know we're going to think back to those moments and we're going to think of those as great moments. The question I've got is, how can I live in the greatness of those moments today? That's what I want. I don't want to just get to a spot and look back and say, those were good times. I want to be able to live in the greatness of that moment today. The same with our faith. I don't want to just have faith in God that could do things yesterday or the faith in God that's going to one day take care of me when I can't do it anymore. I want to experience His greatness today with my faith. And this is what Jesus teaches them through this example. One of the things He teaches them is that He's not just the God of tomorrow or the God of yesterday, but He's powerful today as well. And so when we unfold this thing and we begin looking at it, that's why I say the application of this is going to be for each individual to try to figure out on their own, what does it look like? If you stop waiting for a, a, a better day in the future or whatever it might be to really display your faith or live out your faith or embrace your faith and that moment becomes today. What I believe happens is I believe that there is the possibility of miracles in just in every day. I believe there is possibility of resurrection in every day of our life. I believe there is possibility for things that are bound up that need to be let turned loose of, I believe those uh, the possibilities are in every day. But you've got to ch- you got to choose to believe in the in the power of God today, not just something tomorrow or something that once was, but in who He is. Without any hesitation, today we're throwing away today's, waiting for a better time to get here. We're, we're throwing away today's, looking back at great times. What do you do in order to embrace? your faith, and live it out. What does Jesus mean to you today? Today. How does He help you live your life today? You know, if God will it, we make it through this day, and tomorrow comes, as far as I know, I don't know of anything out of the ordinary that's going to unfold tomorrow. I don't know. Odds are we're probably going to have a few fusses in the morning, getting everybody up, getting them to school, and and on our way to school, somebody's going to be upset, me or them, somebody. Uh, One of the four of us driving to school, and... And, and then, as far as I know, or the minutia of life is going to take place tomorrow. As far as I know. Now, how do I find God's greatness in the midst of all that ordinary stuff? You know, how do I find God's greatness and God's power in the midst of taking the kids back to school? You know, how do I find God's greatness and God's authority and God's power from just the regular Monday events that's going to unfold. I believe that's one of the greatest challenges we as believers deal with each and every day. But let me tell you this. I know this. You won't do it accidentally. As a matter of fact, I'll go as far to say, if you do ever see it, it'll be looking back on it. You'll not know it when you're in it. Unless you intentionally choose to live your life full of of faith in who He is today. Listen, there's a lot of people, and I've been one of them and oftentimes fall into that category. There's a lot of people who are convinced in their minds that one day they're going to do this. I've got family, uh, and I've told you before, I've got a, a cousin that I grew up and I was really close to him, and 
he much like me, after family got in church, he was then raised in church. Well, over time, he's, he's gotten out of church, and he don't have anything to do with it anymore, and uh, he has some substance abuse problems in his life right now, and he has all of that, all of that stuff going on right now, and, and every now and then when I do get a chance to talk to him, which is not much, seeing how uh, we don't live close anymore, and, but when I did get to talk to him, I would often encourage him to uh, take his life, just what it is, and just add, add church to it. Just add church to it. And, and I say that to say, I know in his mind, he is planning one day to get straightened out. I know he is. I know he is. He'll tell you that. One day he's planning to get straightened out. If maybe it's when uh, you know, his jobs change a little bit or when he gets older in life or when the kids grow up or whatever it is, he has got some great plans for what faith he has one day. One day it's going to be powerful. One day it's going to be strong enough. One day it's going to be powerful enough to set him free, to unwrap him, to resurrect him, and to bring back to life what has died. He, he believes that one day that's going to happen. You know, in my, in my talk with him is, is the, the problem with that one day, it, it never comes. It, it never comes unless you decide today that you've got to experience him today. Unless you decide today. And so I encourage him, listen, you've got to quit waiting one day and take all your life and the mess that it is and the garbage that it is and just add, add God to it right now. <laughs> Right now, just, just add God to it. Don't clean anything up. Just add God to it. Because I believe we're missing a lot of miracles and we're missing a lot of God's power because we're planning one day for our faith to do great things. When, it's like I said before, He is never going to be any more God than He is today. He will never, ever have any more power than what He has today. And you've got to quit throwing away today, waiting for the greatness of tomorrow or remembering the greatness of yesterday. Today is not a transition period. Today is to be lived and celebrated in the fullness of God. Let me read you. Go back to the psalm passage. Listen to what David says. And this is one we're pretty familiar with. Passage right before this one. Uh, everybody knows this one. Songs have been wrote about, or, uh, written about it. Psalm 118, 24 through 26. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Now the question I've got in verse 24 is, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. When is it that day? <laughs> when is it that day? It doesn't say this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it unless your life is stressed and then let it go and we'll catch the next one. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Unless there's financial situations and when we get that straightened out, then we will catch this day. It doesn't say unless there's job problems or there's family problems or there's relationship problems. David is saying, today is a blessing from God. Don't throw it away. Rejoice and be glad in it. So my question is, when does that day ever get here? And we show up Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and, and, and it would be good for us eventually to get to the place where our faith declares this, is a, this day is a gift from God. I know many of us are probably planning for there to be a day of where we understand that this is a gift from God. You know, many of us are planning that there's going to come a day of where I'm going to get that understanding or I'm going to have that, per, you know, that perspective in life and this day is coming one day. Well, David declares it for the day that he's currently in. And I would say that's the same for us today. This, there, there's not a better day coming to rejoice and be glad for that God has made this day. There's not a better opportunity. There's not anything else down the road. So many people are waiting for, some, for a better day to give their heart, give their life, and give their mind to Christ. They're going to put a lot of faith in tomorrow. The problem is you just, you never live tomorrow. You're always living today. So, once again, let me say, I don't want to stand and I don't want to look back at great experiences and only understand their greatness from here looking back. I want to be able to understand them 
and perceive what they are today and experience them today. I want to be present. I want to be in that moment before these great things are happening. And I'll go a step further than that. I don't want to just talk about great things that God has done. And I don't want to just anticipate great things that God's going to do. I want to see those great things today in my life. In my life. And let me tell you, when I say great things, I'm not talking every day the water don't have to part for you to see the greatness of God in your life. Every day is not a walking on water moment. Every day is not in the graveyard and you see the dead resurrected. That, that's not necessarily every day of where you get to see those God moments and you realize His power and who He is. If you will open up your eyes and look around you, and you will see His blessing, and you will get to identify His hand, and you will get to see what He's doing in your life, there is greatness there. There's greatness there, if you choose to see it or not. So many people, even with their church, they're waiting for a day of one day our church is going to be great. Well, it's great today. If you choose to see it or not, that's up to you. If you choose to throw away all these Sundays waiting for a better one, I don't know what I can do for you in that, in that regard. Because when that, when that better one comes, you're going to throw it away too, waiting for a better one. Waiting for a better one, waiting for a better one. You're a part of a great church. You're part of a great body. You're a part of a great experience. But you've got to have enough wisdom to be able to be a part of it today. Today. So this morning, there's probably things going on in your life. There's probably things you're wrestling with, things you're dealing with. There's things that you've probably told yourself one day, I'm going to get better. One day, I'm going to get this stuff freed. I'm going to get this stuff unwrapped. I'm going to get this stuff resurrected. One day, I'm going to let these grudges go. I'm going to offer up forgiveness. One, there's probably stuff people, people here today who are anticipating a great display and power of faith one day. Well, I would say that, once again, He is never going to be any more God than He is today. Never. So this morning, instead of you waiting for a day, why don't you live out your faith today? If you declare He's your Savior, we need to live like it. We need to celebrate it. We need to rejoice it. Jan, if you'll come to the piano for me this morning. We're going to give you an opportunity to pray this morning. If there are things going on in your life, things you're wrestling with, things you're dealing with, I've said it before, there is no better time than right now to bring these things to Him. Mary was telling Jesus, you know, you could have done this yesterday, and I know you're going to do this tomorrow, but right now it's hazy. You know, right now it's hard to get a grip on. It's hard to understand. Well, I believe Jesus wants us to fully grasp the fact, not that He was great yesterday and going to be great tomorrow, but He wants to be great in your life right now. Right now. Right now. Whatever's going on and whatever you're dealing with, he, he wants you to embrace it and handle it and take care of it with faith today. Stop waiting. Stop anticipating another time, another opportunity when things are going to be better. You don't know how many people that I've talked to about church, about salvation, and so many people think that when life gets better, they're going to make a commitment. They think that. When it slows down, they're going to make it, they're going to, they're going to, I thought that. The audacity that I had of being in my 20s and thinking my life was going to slow down. What? Slow down? In my 20s? No, it don't slow down. It picks up speed. And then as I've gotten 40, boy, when it starts going downhill, it goes fast. Amen. Faster, right? It goes, it picks up speed. Days get shorter. Things happen. These todays that once felt like they actually had 24 hours in them, now feel like they got about five hours in them. I'm telling you, it's not going to slow. Your situation is never going to get any better for you to fully accept Christ than it is right now. I promise. I know you think that's not true. I don't know your circumstance. But I guarantee you there is an enemy working in your life that's never going to let things get better. So that you are free to to live out a life in Christ, that's just a decision you got to make. And there's no better time to make it than today. Stand your feet. Let me have a word of prayer. We'll invite you to come pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank You, Lord, for this time. And Father, I know that right now, in this moment that we're living, although we may not perceive it, or we may not understand it, there's going to come a, dime, a time, a day, when we look back at this moment and see it as a great time in our life. 
God, I pray that we embrace it for what it is today. God, I pray that you help us understand that today. The blessings that are here, the, your hand that's upon us, and the, the many provisions that you, that you give us, and all the great things you do for us. Lord, I pray that we, that we don't just see greatness from looking back, but God, that you give us the wisdom to see it, understand it, and embrace it today. And God, I pray that, that each one of us, that you show us how, that your Spirit leads us and teaches us how to live out our faith today. What, is it, what does it mean for us today? God, thank you so much for being with us, for, for helping us, for encouraging us, for being patient and long-suffering with us. Lord, I pray that we stop putting off things that we need to do and we come to you and experience your power and your resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen. As Jan plays, I invite you to come pray. Whatever's going on in your life, there's not a better moment to pray about it right now.